In this video, we will learn how to make a simple image classification app using React and TensorFlow.js. TensorFlow.js is a machine learning library for JavaScript. It brings machine learning capabilities in the web browser. In this tutorial, we will use the pre-trained model of TensorFlow.js called MobileNet that is used for image classification. In order to follow along with this tutorial, I don't expect you to have any prior knowledge to machine learning. So there is no machine learning knowledge required for this tutorial. Let's take a look at the app that we'll be working on in this video. When you first open the app, you will be presented with a button that says upload image and a text input. When you click on the button, you can select any image and you will see an image preview for the image that you have selected. And you will also notice there is a button that says identify image. When you click on this button, you will see some results getting populated on right hand side of your screen. So here basically the TensorFlow.js is going to work behind the scenes in order to identify the content for this particular image. As you can see for this image, TensorFlow.js is telling me that this image is a pug or a pug dog and it says that with 81% confidence. So TensorFlow.js is going to give me the results in three different guesses and every single guess is going to have certain level of confidence. We are going to output the results along with the confidence levels and we are also going to mark the one with the highest confidence level as the best guess. I can try with some other image. Click on identify and this time it tells me it is a bee eater. I can select a third image. And this time it tells me that this image contains a fig or a pomegranate, which is true. And I can try with this one. And it tells me it's a kuvas or a golden retriever, which is true. We can also enter the image URL in the text box from a site like pexels.com to generate the image preview. So I will go to pexels.com. I'm going to right click on one of these images, click on copy image address, come here and paste this URL. You will see the image preview getting generated for the image that I have selected from pexels.com. And now I can click on identify. And this time it tells me it is a picture of a baboon. I can right click and copy the image address of some other image, paste. And this time it tells me it is a gorilla. Copy image address, paste it. And this time it tells me it is a Hungarian pointer. So you will notice for most of the images, the TensorFlow.js will make the right guesses or the correct predictions. If you scroll down, you will see the recent images section. This section is going to hold the most recent images that we have used for prediction. If you select one of these images, let's say if I click on this image, you will notice that the bigger image preview is going to be replaced with the one that I have selected from the recent images section. I can click on identify image again and everything is going to work exactly as expected. This app is completely responsive up to the mobile layout. And if you use this app on your phone and if you click on upload image button, it is going to trigger the mobile phone camera that you can take a picture and you can use that image for making the prediction. So let's start working on this app right now. I will start by creating a folder on the desktop and I'm going to call it image ID. I'm going to open this folder in my terminal and here I'm going to install create react app. So I will do npx create react app dot. Once create react app is installed, I'm going to open this in my visual studio code and I am also going to start the server. In my VS code, I will come inside the source directory and I'm going to get rid of all the files except app.js, index.js and index.css. So I'm going to select all the other files and I'm going to delete all these files. Now I have to make a few adjustments. So I will come inside app.js and since I removed these files, I will get rid of these two lines. I am also going to remove this header and replace it with an H1 which says image identification. Let me save the file here. I will go inside index.js and I'm going to remove the report web vitals. I am also going to get rid of this line. I will save my file 
and now inside package.json file I am going to remove these dependencies because I don't use it in my project and I am going to also remove the web vitals this dependency I am going to add a few dependencies here so the dependencies that I am adding are tensorflow models mobile net tensorflow tfjs converter tensorflow tfjs core and I am also adding the node sas make sure that you install these specific versions I am using node sas because I don't want to use CSS in my project and instead I will be using the SCSS so I will save my file at this point I'll go to my terminal and I'm going to stop the project I'm going to remove all the dependencies by typing this command rm rf node modules and package lock dot json now after these dependencies are removed I'm going to install the fresh dependencies by typing this command npm install once all the dependencies are installed I'm going to start the server once the server is up and running you will see image identification showing up on the browser as expected now I will go inside the app.js file inside the source directory and I will import the mobile net model from tensorflow which is used for image classification and identification so I will go on the very first line and I'm going to import the pre-trained model from tensorflow by typing this command which is import star as mobile net from tensorflow models slash mobile net now I will save my file now I will go inside my app component just before the return statement and I am going to create two different pieces of state here my very first state is called model I am initializing it with a null value and I am going to save my model inside this state once the model is loaded my second piece of state is called is model loading it is a boolean state and I am initializing it with a false value and I am using this state in order to display a loading indicator when my model is being loaded I am going to go on the very first line and I am going to import use state and use effect from react and now I will save my file now I will come on this line and I'm going to start working on the function that will load the model for us and I'm going to call this function load model this is going to be an arrow function and I will make this function an asynchronous function the first thing I'm going to do inside the function as soon as I am about to load the model I'm going to set the is model loading state to true after this I will come on to the next line I will use a try and a catch block in the try block I'm going to try to load the model and if there is any error I'm going to catch it inside the catch block and I'm going to log that inside the browser console now inside the try block I'm going to create a const called model and here I'm going to use a wait and I'm going to use the model mobile net dot load I'm going to use this method so this method is going to load the model and now it is going to save it inside the model variable now the second step is once the model is available I want to save it inside this state and in order to do that I'm going to use the set model function and I'm going to pass this model that we have already loaded now once this is done what I will do is I'm going to set the is model loading to false again and I'm going to do exactly the same thing inside the catch block so I will come inside the catch block and I will set is model loading to false now our function is created but we are not calling this function so I will use the use effect I'm going to pass a callback function and inside this callback function I am going to call the load model function that we have already created here and as a second argument to the use effect I am going to pass an empty array as a set of dependencies because I want this model to be loaded only the first time when the application is being loaded now what I will do I will come here and right before this return statement 
I'm going to write an if statement if is model loading and if the model is loading I want to return an h2 which says model loading now I will save my function and now at this point if I go to my browser and if I refresh my screen you will see that the model loading message appears and after that I see the image identification so so far everything is working as expected now back to my VS code I will come on to this line and I'm going to create a new piece of state called image URL and I'm initializing it with a null value later in this video I'm going to create an input file uploader to upload an image and I'm going to save the URL of this image inside the image URL state that we have just created now I'm going to scroll down to the return statement I'll come below this h1 tag and I'm going to create a div with a class name of input holder inside this div I'll create an input with a type of file I will give it an accept property and that will be image slash star that means it is going to receive only the image files I'll give it a capture property of camera so that means if you are using this app on your mobile phone it is going to trigger your mobile phone camera when you click on this input and finally I'm going to give it a class name of upload input and I am also going to add a class name to this h1 and I will call it header and I'm going to save my file now if I go to my browser you will notice that the input file uploader is showing up and if I click on it I'm able to select the files as well which is good now what I would like to do here is as soon as I select a file to upload I would like to create a URL to this file and save it in a state that we have created called image URL so in order to do this I will be adding an on change property on the input that we have created so let me go to my VS code and I will add an on change property and I'm going to call a function called upload image and this is a function that does not exist yet so we will start working on this function now in order to create this function I will come on this line just before the use effect and I'm going to create a const called upload image and this is going to be an arrow function that will take an event and I'm simply going to log it inside the browser console so I will do a console.log of event I will save my file and now I'll go to my browser I will inspect go to the console and I'm trying to select a file here so once I select a file you will see that the event is now logged inside the browser console I can see there is a target property and this target property is nothing but our input and if you go inside the target and if you scroll down you will see there is a property called file and this files is an array like property which has a length property and it has a numeric index and on the first index you will see the file that we are trying to upload so what I would like to do is I'm going to get hold of this file in my code and I'm going to generate a URL for this and save it inside the state and in order to do that I will go here inside VS code I'll remove my console log statement and I'm going to create a const called files and that will be e dot target so I'm destructuring the files from event dot target so now this files as we already saw that it has a length property and I can check if the files are actually there by using the if statement and I'm going to say if files dot length if it is greater than zero then I will do something or else that means if there is no files if there is no files there is not going to be any image URL and in that case I am simply going to set the image URL to be a null value and in case there is a file in that case I'm going to create a const called URL and here I'm going to use URL dot create object URL and inside this method I'm going to pass the actual file that I'm trying to upload which lives in the files object at the zero index and this URL dot create object URL it is a method that will simply create the URL for the file that is being passed as a parameter to this method now once we have the URL 
the next step is to save this URL in the image URL state. So I am going to call this function again, which is set image URL. And I'm simply going to pass this URL. Now I will save my function. So this function is ready. What it is doing is this is my input. As soon as I select a file, this will go here. I get hold of the file. I'm generating the URL for this file and I'm saving it inside this particular state. So I have the image URL now being saved inside the state. So let's check this inside the browser console. So I will say console.log of image URL. Now I save it. I will go back to my browser. Now I am going to refresh the screen. I will select a file. And now you will see that the URL is indeed getting generated. I will use this URL to generate an image preview in the browser. In order to add the image preview, I will come back to my app.js and I will start adding some markup here. So I will start by adding my very first div and I will give it a class name of main wrapper. Inside this div, I will create another div with a class name of main content. And inside this div, I'm going to create one more div with the class name of image holder. Inside the image holder div, I'm going to create an image tag and this image tag is going to be the image preview for our app. So I will add the source attribute and that is going to be equal to the image URL. And if you scroll up, this is the image URL that we are saving inside the state. I am getting this value from the image URL. That will be the source for our image. I am also going to add an alt attribute of upload preview. I will add one more attribute of cross origin anonymous. We need this attribute to be added in order for the TensorFlow applications to work properly. And finally, I'm going to add a property of ref. So basically I am trying to add a reference to this image. And in order to do that, I need to first import use ref from react. Now I will come on this line and I'm going to create a const called image ref and that will be equal to use ref. Now I will copy this image ref and I'm going to paste it inside the ref property for this image tag. Now the markup for the image is ready, but I would like to display this image only when there is something inside the image URL. So if I scroll up, you will notice that at one point, this image URL holds a null value. So I would like my image to show up only when there is a non falsy value. So I'm going to cut this and I'm going to wrap it in a condition and I will check if image URL exists. Only then you output the image tag. Now I will go inside the main wrapper and here I'm going to add a button and I'm going to give it a class name of button. I'm going to add some text which will say identify image. And also I want this button to show up when there is something inside the image URL. So I will say if there is something inside the image URL, only then you display this button. So now my markup is ready and I can save my file. And now if I go to my browser, I can select a file and open. Now you see that the image preview is working exactly as expected. And also we have the button showing up which says identify image. Now before I move any further, I would like to add some CSS for my app to be styled properly. So let's start by adding the font files first. So I'm going to go inside my public folder inside index.html and I'm going to replace this default title with these three lines of code. So the first two lines are taken from Google fonts and I'm trying to use the Poppins font from Google. And in the second line, I'm just replacing the default title with this title, which says image identification app. And now I'm going to save my file. Now I'm going to close this file and I will rename the index.css file to be called index.scss. I'm going to replace everything inside this file with the CSS that I have already written and I'm going to save this file. I will come inside index.js file and I'm going to fix this import by calling the right file, which is index.scss and I'm going to save the file. Now, if I go to my browser and if I refresh the page, you will notice that my app is now styled. Let me select a file and you will see my button is also styled. So now I can start working on adding the functionality on this button. Now, what I would like to do is 
When the button is clicked, I would like to call a function. This function will use the TensorFlow model to do the image prediction and give me the results based on its findings. So now I will go back to my VS code and I'm going to add an on click handler on this button. So I will say on click and here I'm going to call a function and let's call it identify. So I'm going to copy this function. I will come on this line and I'm going to create a const called identify and this is going to be an arrow function. I will make this function an asynchronous function. Inside this, I'm going to create a const called results and here I'm going to make the use of that TensorFlow model. So basically we save the TensorFlow mobile net model inside this state called model. So I'm going to make the use of this model here. So I will say await model dot classify and inside this classify method, I'm going to pass an argument and the argument that I'm supposed to pass inside the classify is the actual image element. So that is the reason I created a reference to this image that is saved inside the image ref. So I'm going to pass the reference to this image element. So I will say image ref dot current. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm using the mobile net TensorFlow model and I'm calling the classify method on it and I'm passing the actual image as an argument to this method so that it can do some classification and save its findings inside the results variable that I'm creating here. So I will come on to the next line and I'm going to log the results inside the browser console. So I'm going to save my file and let's go to the browser. I will inspect the element, go inside the console and I'm going to refresh the page. Now select a file and if I click on this button, you will see that I am getting an array back. And if I open the array, you see that the first finding or the first prediction, it says it is a pug dog and it says that with 87% confidence. So that means I am getting the good results back. So my next step is I'm going to save these findings inside a state. So basically, I, instead of doing the console log of these results, I'm going to save these results in a state that I'm going to create here. So let's create this state. So I will say const results set results equals use state and here I'm going to initialize this with an empty array. So what I will do is I'm going to take these findings and I'm going to set results and I'm going to pass down the results. So let me save the file. So basically all the results that I am getting here are now getting saved inside this results state. So I can take this and I can do a console log of the results right over here and if I go to my browser select a file and if I click on the button you will now see I am again getting the array back and it says this time it is a fig and in fact I see a fig over here so we are in fact getting the right results back so everything seems to be working fine until this point now in the next step what we are going to do is I'm going to loop over through this results and I'm going to generate a markup that is going to show me the results. And in order to do that, I'm going to copy and paste some code that I have already written. I will come right under this image holder div and I'm going to paste this. Let me save the file. And now if I go to my browser, you will see that I am getting the results being populated here. Let me select another file and this time if I click on identify image, I am seeing that it is telling me this bird is called bee eater. Let me try another one. Click on identify image and now it is telling me it is a pug. Let's try with this one and this time it is telling me it's a golden retriever. We have to understand that this is based on the machine learning so it cannot be 100% accurate but the results are very very close. At this point, the basic functionality of our app seems to be working fine. Now, I would like to add a text input where we can enter the image URL directly instead of loading the image with a file input. And in order to do that, I will go back to my VS code. I will come on this line where I have defined my input file. And on the next line, I'm going to create another input with a type of text. I'm going to add a placeholder that will say paste image URL that is going to hold a reference. So basically I'm going to create a reference to this input. So let me scroll up. I'm going to use the use ref. So I will come on this line and I will say const text input ref and that is going to be use ref. 
I'm going to copy this text input ref and I'm going to paste it inside the ref. Now finally, I'm going to add an on change handler and here I'm going to call a function handle on change. So I'm going to create this function. So let me copy this. I will go up on this line and here I'm going to create a const called handle on change and this is going to be an arrow function that will take an event as a parameter and what I would like to do inside this function as soon as I paste a URL inside this text input I would like to go and set the image URL state so I'm going to make the use of this function called set image URL so here I will say set image URL and here I'm going to say e dot target dot value and after setting this, I'm going to set the results array to be an empty array. Now I'm going to save the file. So let me go back to the browser. So now I see that there is a text input that is showing up here. I will go here and I'm going to paste this URL that I've taken from pexels.com and I'm going to click on identify image. It is telling me it's a Tusker, which is right. So it is giving me the right prediction. So everything seems to be working fine. I have the file upload input. And if I select this image, click on identify, and it is telling me it's a Kuvaz. With this particular image, I have tried like two or three times. Sometimes it is telling me it's a golden retriever and sometimes it tells me it's a Kuvaz. So I will say that it is not 100% accurate all the times, but most of the time it works fine. So at this point, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add one more element here. And this is going to be a span between these inputs. And I'm going to say or, and I'm going to give it a class name of or let me save the file and now if I come to the browser you will see there is a or text that is showing up so what I'm doing here is I'm saying that either you can use this file input or you can use this text input now inside this text input I'm going to paste another URL from pexels.com and I'm going to click on identify so when I click on this button you will notice that this text is still there and on click of this button as soon as I start the identify function I want this field to be cleared up and in order to do that I will come back to my VS code and here I will go to the function identify and on the very first line of this function I will call the reference to the text input which is the text input ref and I'm going to say text input ref dot current dot value and that is going to be equal to an empty string so I'm going to save this I will go back to the browser and now you will see that the string is not there so this time I'm going to try with another image so I'm going to paste this image from pexels.com again and I'm going to click on identify and as soon as I do that you will notice that the text field goes empty and this is exactly what I want now what I would like to do is to display a button in place of this file input that says upload image. So I'm going to hide this upload input using CSS and in place of this, I'm going to display a nicely styled button. Let's go to our app.js to add this button. So I'm going to go inside here and here you see this is our file input and right under this, I'm going to add a button that will say upload image and I'm going to add a class here. So I will add a class name of upload image let me save the file now let's go to the browser now you will see that a nicely styled upload image button appears over here but right now there is no functionality added to this so when I click on it nothing happens so what I would like to do is when I click on this button I want this file input to be triggered so on click of this I would like to trigger this file input in order to select the file so basically I would like to replicate the same behavior that happens on click of this file input when I click on this button so I'm going to go here in my VS code and I'm going to add an on click handler so I will say on click and I'm going to call this trigger upload so this is a function that I have not created yet so on click of this button I am calling this function called trigger upload so I'm going to go here just before the use effect and I'm going to create a const called trigger upload this is going to be an arrow function and inside this function what I would like to do as soon as I click on this button I would like to trigger the same click 
on this file input. First of all, I am going to add a reference to this file input. So let me go up and I'm going to add a reference here. So I will say const file input ref and that is going to be use ref. I'm going to copy this file input ref and I'm going to paste it here inside the reference. So now I can target this file input ref by using this reference. So basically I have the file input ref created. So inside this function, the trigger upload function, I'm going to say file input ref dot current dot click. So basically I'm triggering a click on this file input when I click on this button. Let me save the file. Now let's go to the browser. Let me refresh the screen. Now when I click on upload image, you see that I am able to upload the image just like I am able to do by clicking on this file input. So I don't need this file input. I still need it, but I want this file input to be hidden so I can just click on my button to upload the image instead of displaying this file input. So what I will do is I will come back to my VS code and inside I am going inside index.scss and there is a point where I have some styles that are already commented out. I'm going to remove these comments. So what I'm doing here is I'm hiding the upload input. So I'm giving a width, property, height, visibility and opacity to be zero for this particular input. And let me save the file. Now when you come to the browser, you will see only the upload image button and a text input button. So the upload image button, I can click and I can select any image. And here in the text input button, I can copy and paste a URL from some site like uh, pexels.com and it will generate the image here and I can click on identify. So everything seems to be working perfectly okay. Now finally, I would like to add a section where I can display the recent images that I have used for prediction. So I will go back to my VS code and right under this div, which has a class name of main wrapper, I'm going to create another div, which has a class name of recent predictions. Inside of this div, I'm going to create a heading which says recent images. And right next to this heading, I'm going to create another div, which has a class name of recent images. Inside of this div, I would like to display a set of recent images that I have used for prediction. In order to display the recent images, I need to create a state where I can save all the image URLs. So I will scroll up and I'm going to go to this line and I will create a new state called history and an updater function called set history. And I'm going to initialize this with an empty array. Now, in order to populate the history array with all the recent images, I will create a use effect. So I'm going to scroll down to this line and I'm going to create another use effect that will take a callback function as its first argument. And inside of this use effect, I'm going to check if the image URL exists and it is a non falsy value. In that case, I'm going to call the updater function set history and I'm going to pass this image URL and I'm going to spread out the history array. I am also going to pass the image URL as a dependency for this use effect. Now I'm going to save the file. Now our history array is ready and we can now map over through this array to display the recent images. So I'm going to scroll down to this line and inside a pair of curly brackets, I'm going to map over through the history array. This map method is going to take a callback function and inside this callback function, I'm going to take image and index as parameters and I'm going to return a div with a class name of recent prediction and inside of this div, I'm going to output an image tag that will have the source of 
image and it is also going to hold the alt attribute of recent prediction. I am also going to add a key attribute on this div and this key attribute is going to be a combination of this image and index. So I will put a pair of back text and inside I am going to put image and dollar index. Now I want this complete section to appear only if there is something inside the history array. So I am going to cut this and I am going to wrap it in a condition that is going to check if history dot length if it is greater than zero. In that case you output this markup. I will save my file. Now I can go back to my browser. Now I can click on upload image and as soon as I upload an image you see that this image starts appearing in the recent images section. I can click on another image and you see that the recent images section seems to be working perfectly as expected. Now another functionality I would like to add is when I click on one of these recent images I want this bigger image preview to be replaced with the one that I am selecting from the recent images section. So I will come back to my VS code and on the image tag I am going to add an on click handler and this is going to take a callback function and here I am going to call the updater function set image URL and I am simply going to pass the image. Let me save the file. Now if I come back to the browser I will give it a refresh. Now I can click on upload button. I can click on identify. Here the recent images section is being populated. Let me select a few more images. And now when I click on one of these images, you see that the bigger image section, the bigger image preview, it is being replaced with the image that I am selecting from the recent images. And I can click on identify and everything seems to be working perfectly as expected. I can even copy and paste a URL from a site like pexels.com and the predictions are working fine. And also I can see inside the recent images section that the most recent image that I am trying to add here or through upload image they are being populated inside the recent images section. So everything seems to be working perfectly as expected. I can try with another image. Click on identify. It seems to be working fine. It is telling me it is a tiger and the recent images section is being populated. I can click on this. I can click on identify and everything seems to be working good so far. At this point, the functionality of our app seems to be working fine. This is more or less like an MVP sort of an app with the bare minimum functionality. You can always polish the app and add bells and whistles to improve the UI or the functionality. You can even try and integrate this existing setup in your own application. Please feel free to do so and let me know in the comments how you find this video. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, comment and share my video and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. Thank you.